Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. So a few months ago, Google announced that they're doing something with video. VP8? Uh, I'd assume this is something codec related, and allegedly it's not going to have any licensing tentacles. So VP8 is a product that was... Pixie's shaking her head. Did you hear Pixie, come here. She doesn't like VP8 for some reason because she says that none, none of the hardware out there supports it. I don't understand. So one of the problems with VP8 is that it is written by a company called Onto that used to be called Duck, and they built a codec in order to try and get around some of the patent issues for H.264 and MPEG-2 and even Windows Media 9 VC1. They didn't actually do that. They just hacked together code and claimed that it didn't actually violate any of the patents. And for the most part, they didn't check. Um, in fact, large portions of the codec is actually written such that it takes the H.264 reference code and they make very small changes to say, this isn't the same thing, but it's really darn close. Um, without being super technical, think of it like, I say that you can encode video to a range between 1 and 128. And you say, well, I'm going to get around that patent by instead of encoding between 1 and 128, I'm going to encode to 1 to 256, but every one of those numbers corresponds to the numbers 1 through 128, because you have to take our numbers and divide them by 2 before you present them. Okay. <laughs> so, what it really boils down to is, like a lot of the things that are open source that you say... Yeah, we know this was stolen, but we don't know where it was stolen from. <laughs> and so we're just going to get around it. You know, um, have you ever used VLC? Oh, yeah. So VLC is great. Who's paying the licensing fees for all of the MPEG decoders that are built into it? The v VLC guys? No, it's free and it's open source. You're supposed to pay for those things. VP8 is the same kind of intellectual property shell game of by moving things or obfuscating where you stole them from it just kind of works. Wait, so why is Google backing this? It doesn't sound like that'd be a very intelligent decision. You ever known anybody at Google to make video codecs? <laughs> I mean, what happens Hang is... Hang on, I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I... Uh, not what happens that. is you end up with a whole bunch of of lawyers who say, we should go out and license this thing because this thing doesn't have a licensing fee. And we're big enough people probably won't sue us because we've got big lawyers. And that's how you end up in these scenarios where you say, we're just so big, you're probably not going to sue us over the couple of hundred grand that you could get for us violating your patent. And you can't afford to litigate against us because it would cost you too much to sue us in order to get your couple of hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's kind of evil. It, the The whole do not be evil I, think, I thought it was Google. do no evil, but I don't know if that no mm. is spelled K-N-O-W or N-O. Yeah, so there's a lot of problems with the VP8 and it... The codec. The, the codec. Some of the stuff is just inefficient. Uh, we just did a video on IP and B frames. VP8 doesn't have any B frames. That's instantly... It's going to be 20 to 30 percent less efficient than H.264. Wow. Um, it only lets you use three frames for reference. H.264 lets you use 16 frames. So imagine you were talking about what frame is most like the frame that I'm showing you now. Being able to pick between a 500 millisecond range and a 100 millisecond range. I mean, that's a big difference in reference frames that you can choose from. That's another like 10 to 15% inefficiency. So uh, what is VPA in relation to the WebM thing? They're just all variations of the same thing. It's like onto VP6 and Duck were all the same codec under different names. VP8 is the code for the compression, but WebM is an implementation of VP8. Is it a wrapper, so, much like AVI, or...? 
it's it's a little more complex than that. So you sometimes hear MPEG-4 called H.264. Right. MPEG-4 has a lot of things in it. It's a container. It's a metadata format. It's a video compression. And part of MPEG-4 is the video compression part. And that video compression part is called H.264. With WebM, WebM is a partial implementation of the video compression and container for VP8. But VP8 also contains some metadata information that's not part of WebM and you know, codecs and standards get to be a little weird. So is this generally going to be a good thing or just another, oh my god, why are we doing this thing? I think what the idea was that Skype said, if we do this, we could have an HTML5 client because HTML5 in most browsers supports the VP8 codec. So you could probably build a web-based Skype player. That could be cool, but overall it's a bad thing because all of the hardware devices that have been built for doing video conferencing support H.264 and H.263, which is what Polycom and SIPS devices and all of those use. So it's making Skype even more proprietary. Well, Microsoft ought to like that. Uh, except that it's proprietary with the codec that they didn't pick to use to support in IE9. So, no. <laughs> uh, the, the world would be a better place if everything would go with H.264 right now. And I say that with the bias of somebody who sat on the H.264 ratification committee, but... Um, yeah, but licensing. The, the, I mean, that, that's the re reason that VP8 exists is to avoid licensing that it doesn't actually avoid. Right. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. 